Mig makes weekly roundup number 14. We have 3D printing, LoRa and Bluetooth modules, a CAN bus logger, and robots again. Lots of stuff on Kickstarter, like robots. The Dobot M1 is actually quite a cool little robotic arm. Why? Well, for $1,400 US, you get an arm that can 3D print, laser engrave, solder, pick and place using OpenCV. How accurate is it? 0.02mm accuracy. If you're looking for a robotic arm that does all your desktop manufacturing, then this is it for only $1,400 US. At the other end of the scale, we have the shop arm, which is designed as a training tool for STEM education. It's a 3D printed robotic arm that claims 0.5mm repeatability accuracy. That's pretty good for a 3D printed arm for only $500 US. Make your own robot. The quad bot reminds me of the replicators from Stargate SG-1, except I don't think they are sentient yet. It's one of the better robots I've seen around, basically because it doesn't have boring wheels. Contains an Atmega 32U4, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LiPo and sensors to enable some basic kinematics. Most of the parts are 3D printed and supports the Arduino IDE, LabVIEW API and RG Blockly. Pure Modules is a board that contains an NRF52832 SOC, accelerometer, coin cell holder, JTAG connector and NFC expansion header. It pushes out 20 GPIOs for you to play with. The board has edge connectors so that you can connect to a variety of sensor and control boards, such as thermal cameras, GPS and Ethernet. As part of this Kickstarter, they're also offering a super sensor board designed for health tracking. The Avocado Pi is a small board designed for STEM education that attaches to a Raspberry Pi and comes with a variety of sensors and buttons. This is the second Kickstarter this guy has launched, with the previous one being quite successful. The Fippy, I'm sure I'm going to get some heat for saying that wrong, is an ESP32 based all-in-one wireless module. It doesn't just contain wireless and Bluetooth, but also LoRa, Sigfox and LTE. Holy cow, Batman. My expense budget has just been blown again. So stay tuned for a review on this when they're shipped. Oh, they also have a PySense and PyTrack board on offer that the FIPI slots into, enabling motion sensing and GPS. This is one of those things. This guy is converting old CRT oscilloscope displays into useful items, like a clock. It comes in a kit format with everything except the CRT and housing. Note, CRTs contain very high voltages, so this one is only for experienced makers. Another STEM product that I was tossing up not to include. It's a prototype based board that really doesn't give any details on what's on it. I'll be writing to this guy to get him to provide some more detail, so check back on this one if you're interested. The PDK64 is an industrial tablet platform containing a sunlight readable TFT touch display, all winner A64 quad core running at 1.2 GHz, 1 GB RAM, 8 GB flash, SD slot, Wi Fi, Ethernet, and a standard Pi and EULA GPIO header, all for 118 US. Is this Kickstarter too good to be true? I'll be keeping my eye on this one, so stay tuned. The Sentinel is a small device you attach before your 3D print head, which will both clean your filament before it gets to the head and also pause your printing should you run out. A nice little add-on if you don't have this functionality on your printer. Oh, talking about 3D printing, I have to apologise for a guff I made in last week's roundup. The rear arm board I mentioned doesn't actually include the ramps board. Thanks to SK Whiskar 2322 for picking that up. We're starting to see a lot of alternatives to 3D printing. The Sapphire is a laser SLA printer that is similar to last week's UV-based printer, but this one claims around 3 micron resolution, with a slightly larger print volume. Since it's laser-based, it can also engrave and cut thin objects. Another 3D printer, but this one is a photolithographic printer similar to the Sapphire. It's a huge rack-sized thing that will print down into the material, but only claims 50 micron accuracy. It uses a standard 1080p projector for setting the resin. The Fotrick isn't a traditional maker product, but could be a useful addition to something like a drone. It's a thermal camera designed to detect any abnormal heat. It claims much better accuracy at detecting a fire than traditional methods, with an 80 by 80 pixel sensor and onboard analysis. Hey, another 3D printer. However, this one is big, claiming a print volume of 600mm cubed down to an 8 micron accuracy. 
It contains a Repetier firmware and Aztec X3 Pro controller board. It's a heavy duty machine designed to control either laser or traditional 3D printheads. And yet another 3D printer. This one is slightly different in that it has four extruders. This one looks quite good, but the creator hasn't put up any specs on the darn thing. If anyone can find any, then please add it into the comments below. Unusually, Indiegogo seems to be quite busy. MyoSwitch provides a method to physically power on and off your 3D printer. It is based on the ESP8266 and also contains a power meter. So you can set it to automatically turn off when printing is finished or by smartphone app. If you already have a laser cutter and are getting frustrated with its power, then you can upgrade the laser module to something that will cut 19mm thick wood. Wow, it's a fairly quick and easy replacement for your existing laser. This one is apparently the best 3D printer for creative kids. The Yeehaw 3D is a low cost printer that has a very simplified interface running off your tablet. Has an auto leveling platform and protective door to avoid any potential issues. Looks good. Block Zero is another 3D printer. Man, I thought we had an oversupply of robots. It seems to be world domination from 3D printers we need to be careful of. This one is designed to be an ultra portable version, claiming to print at 80 millimeters per second on a 200 millimeter cubed bed. That's pretty quick. Rabbit Max Flex is a Pi hat with a whole bunch of sensors and interfaces like infrared relay, 16x2 LCD header, UARTs and headers for various I2C sensors. A nice little hat if you want to sense stuff and act on it. And only one interesting thing in pre-launch on CrowdSupply. iMix is a development board in pre-launch on CrowdSupply. It contains a Cortex M4 MCU, Nordic NRF51 Bluetooth, Zigbee, battery charging and sensors. It can individually control and monitor power to each subsection and also contains an auditable random number generator. While I'm Tindy, there's no robots, I promise. This is a great self-contained CAN bus locker. It supports bit rates up to 1 megabit per second and supports any 2.0A and 2.0B CAN bus interfaces. Has an SD slot supporting up to 32 gig cards. If you want to be able to snoop on your vehicle's CAN interface, then get one of these. I mentioned the slush engine in a previous roundup, but this is a new model. The model XLT is basically the same, but without the UEXT expansion header. The ESUS is a board targeted towards robotics. It contains the usual Node MCU based ESP8266 and two full H bridges, controlled via the Arduino IDE or Blockly. Another Node MCU ESP8266, but this one is an ultra compact version measuring only 35 by 27 millimeters pushes out all the GPIOs onto male and female headers so you can stack things on top like an LCD. Are you an audio engineer? You might find this SPI to DMX512 controller handy. It has three DMX channels with the first capable of being either master or slave. It contains an onboard MCU that handles all the logic grunt work, so all you have to do is speak SPI. Yet another DC and stepper motor controller for the Pi. This one is capable of controlling up to six DC motors or three steppers. It has two additional PWM connections for servos or LEDs, motor voltage from 2 to 11 volts, and it's all accessible over I2C. The Zero Color was also in a previous roundup. This one is the next version, with the only difference being an additional SPI and I2C pinout. It contains the same SSD1331 OLED and micro SD slot. Over at Seed, there's a heart rate and oximeter containing the MAX30102, which gives you heart rate and O2 blood absorption. And a bat detector. No, not the flying type. This handy little device will give you an estimate of just how much juice is left in your LiPo. Just connect and four LEDs will indicate the amount of battery left. Looking for an accurate ranging sensor? The VL53LOX breakout from Adafruit is capable of measuring from 30mm to 1.2m at 5% accuracy, all working off 3 to 5 volts with logic level converters. SpikeFun have their NRF52832 breakout board operating at the usual 1.7 to 36 volts, but this also has an onboard regulator so it can be powered up to 6 volts. The cheap side of town seems to be going wireless. Over at Banggood, there's a cheap 100 milliwatt NRF24L01 based transceiver running off a 3.6 volt supply, and a QI wireless charging receiver capable of hitting 5 volts at one amp. 
a handy Bluetooth 4.0 audio module based on the CSR8630 chipset, an SPI-based 433 MHz FSK receiver using the CC1101 and running off 1.8 to 3.6 volts. And this is really cool. Similar to two servo modules I mentioned in past roundups, this is a servo that has inbuilt positioning and is controlled via a three-wire interface. It's bi-directional, so you can set the angle of the servo and query its temperature, load, speed, and position. There's also a GPRS GSM-based shield with onboard camera and SD slot. Supports all the usual GSM functions like SMS and voice calls. But remember, GSM will be phased out in most countries, so might not be worth getting it. A cheap 100 milliwatt LoRa module based on the RFM95 chip gives you an effective 37.5 kilobits per second bitrate, a decent enough LoRa module for that price. And then we have a whole bunch of Bluetooth modules from IC Station, CC2541 to CC2640 to NRF51822, as well as some ultra-cheap Bidu and GLONASS GPS modules. And motion sensors, current, pressure, temperature and humidity sensors the MAX30100 heart rate sensor I'll shortly be running a tutorial on, so stay tuned for that one. And IC Station also have a nice GPIO breakout for the new ESP32, which allows you to chuck it into a breadboard. I've created an honourable mention section on my website that contains some of the things that didn't make it into this video. So if you're interested, check it out. Thanks for watching this week's roundup. As always, links are in the description below and also on Skynet. Uh, website. Uh, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to hit like and if you subscribe on any of the social platforms you'll be notified whenever I publish videos. I appreciate all my Patreon supporters who are helping me with all my running costs. If you want to support me further then head on over to Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you next week.